Hey guys, my name is Sabrina and I make pottery here on this channel and today I thought I would make a ceramic jack-o-lantern since Halloween is just around the corner and I tend to procrastinate. So I thought I would get it out of the way now so that by the time Halloween rolls around I'll be all ready to go. I've made a ceramic jack-o-lantern for the last three years now and I wanted to go big this year and to do that I thought I would start with about six pounds of clay which I'm going to be centering in two separate halves that will come together to be a whole. So you can see here I'm just centering about three pounds of clay and then throwing the other three pounds on top of that and then centering it like that. This seems like a good method for centering larger amounts of clay since it can be kind of tiring to do it all at once. And although I look pretty strong, sometimes my arms get tired too. So that was my workaround for that. And once it feels the center, I'm just gonna open that up. And yeah, from here on out, things are gonna get pretty crazy. I will admit this one was quite the doozy. Um, so I am trying to improve my skills at throwing with larger amounts of clay. And it's definitely a work in progress, but I think this video and this project in and of itself was a good example of not needing to be the best potter in the world to make nice pots and to be happy with your pots. And I think that it's important to just take the skills that you have and, you know, work, work through it and try your best and, you know, not get too worried about maybe it's not perfect because you can still find beauty and imperfection and that's just important to keep in mind in all aspects of life but anyways that's enough wisdom for now um so as you can see here things are just a little wobbly the rim is kind of all over the place which is usually caused by the clay being uneven so like one side of the wall is thicker than the other side and the thicker side is going to be shorter than the thinner side and you're just gonna end up with an uneven rim. So it probably had something to do with my centering on this one. Probably could have spent a little bit more time on that, but like I said, sometimes my arms hurt. So I just pushed through it and it all worked out okay in the end or else we wouldn't be watching this video. So as you can see here, I'm just working on pulling up those walls and kind of shaping it into this tall, skinny, gourd-esque shape. So I'm pulling up my walls and just coning it inwards and pulling up the walls and coning it inwards because anytime that you squeeze inwards, you're kind of pushing all that clay into the walls. And so it's going to get thicker. So just kind of working until I can no longer fit my hand in there and then just sealing it off and doing my best to compress that closure the best that I can because this area can be really susceptible to cracks. So just keeping that in mind going forward. And now we're going to attempt to trim it. This looks crazy because it is. I don't have a chuck, which I would usually use to trim something like this. So I just used a bowl and some towels and that didn't really work so well. So I resorted to trimming it by hand, which worked pretty all right. It's a pumpkin, so I don't think anyone's gonna be terribly upset that it's not perfectly rounded at the bottom. In fact, it almost makes it better, so. One thing I always find myself thinking with pottery is like, maybe I am fixated on this one aspect that could be different or improved, but if there's anything I've learned in sharing my art with other people, it's that they, they often don't see it the same way that you do. So I decided to persevere and to do that, I decided to cut off the lid much like one would start carving a real pumpkin, except conveniently, I don't have to remove anything from the inside of this, except just a little bit of clay at that rim because this piece is a little bit thicker than I would usually go for. Maybe next year it'll be even thinner. I think that's a good goal to have. I think it'd be really fun to keep making a pumpkin every fall for the rest of my potting career and then maybe 20, 30 years from now, I'll just have this army of pumpkins and it'll just be the cutest little pumpkin patch that you ever saw. So make sure you subscribe so that you can be the first one to watch 
that video scheduled for 2050. So get ready for that. Um, now I'm just going in and giving it those three-dimensional pumpkin ridges. Not sure if there's a scientific term for them, but I'm just going in and drawing those lines on there. And then I'm just gonna use the angled wooden tool that I have and just kinda scrape away and try and get it to look like a pumpkin. And then I'm just gonna continue those lines onto the lid to try and get it to look realistic and get those details in there because I really want this one to be cute and spoiler alert, turned out real cute, so. Yeah, um, the pumpkins I've made in the past definitely weren't quite as sculpted as this. So I am really glad that I was able to improve that this year. And I also wanted to improve my stem from the previous years. So I decided to pull a handle so that I could get a nice little curly cue on there. I do have a video on pulling handles if you would like to know more about that. And yeah, just curling it and sticking it together and just making sure that it's connected so that it doesn't end up cracking there. And yeah, then I'm just gonna take my wooden angled tool again and just really define where that stem starts so that it actually looks like a three-dimensional pumpkin. And while I was doing this, I was definitely looking at pictures of pumpkins and stems and trying to get a feel for you know what they looked like and trying to replicate that through texture and dimension and all that good stuff and after that was time to carve so i went back and forth between doing wanting to do a scary pumpkin and wanting to do a cute pumpkin and looked at some pictures of jack-o'-lanterns and I really liked ones with cute little crescent moon eyes so I knew that that was what I needed to do so went with a cute triangle nose and carved in those eyes and we're just gonna slap a big old smile on there because he's a happy little guy and no pumpkin by Sabrina would be complete without big chunky teeth so those are definitely gonna be making an appearance and I'm just making sure that I'm cutting all of these as straight as I possibly can. I don't want it to look slanted or uneven. I'm just trying to summon all of the knowledge I've gained in my life through carving real pumpkins and transferring that into carving this ceramic one. Uh, I will say I do prefer making ceramic jack-o'-lanterns because it's a lot less messy and you get to keep it forever and you can see how excited I am right here and then just getting rid of all those little clay bits that fell inside smoothing it out as one does going back between the sponge and my fingertips and a wet um, a wet brush and just making sure that it's nice and smooth in there um, just because that's really gonna make it look visually refined, which is the goal. And then I'm gonna add some texture to the stem and I'm gonna look at how cute my cat is and so are you and we're gonna love it. And we're gonna go back to carving that stem and I'm just gonna use that angled tool and just create some rough lines and then smooth those lines out so that it looks like all these pictures of pumpkin stems that I have seen on the internet and also in real life. And yeah, just smoothing it out, making sure that it is to my liking and once he is all he's all done, it's just time to let him dry at the studio and he'll end up in one of those kilns there. And once he's been fired, we're gonna take our ancient copper glaze and we're gonna start painting on three solid coats of this. I went ahead and painted the inside and the carving area with a black underglaze and then I stopped because I realized I was just wasting black underglaze and I could have just used acrylic paint. So 
that's what we did there. And then the stem is gonna be a chocolate brown and I'm just gonna paint that, paint that on there. I really like the color of this glaze as is, but I think it turned out pretty cool after the firing as well. And here is the final result. I think it turned out pretty cool. Kind of steampunky, love his face. Super glad that this candle actually fits inside of it because I was worried that it wouldn't. But super happy with how it turned out and I hope you guys enjoyed watching as well. Make sure to subscribe if you want to see more of my creative endeavors and you can leave a like down below if you enjoyed watching and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye!